Have you ever had the issue of going to a restaurant, you bite into their dinner roll, and it's the driest piece of garbage you've ever had? We're going to solve that issue today by making a classic dish, that being Yorkshire pudding. Of course, we're going to put our own spin. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Ezra. Welcome back to Big Time Eaters, and welcome back to Big Time Recipes. Let's go ahead and hop into the ingredients. So for your basic Yorkshire pudding, what you'll need is some all-purpose flour, a bunch of eggs, whole milk, and your choice of fat. We've got a couple variations here. Just regular beef fat, flavored, and then butter or vegetable oil. Some of the fun twists that we've decided to add today to make it the BTE way is a onion and cheese variation, as well as a gochujang variation, that being Korean chili paste. We're gonna pull out our huevos, and then we're gonna get to cracking. I've got about 12 eggs here, just into the bowl. That's the first step to making a good Yorkshire. We're making such a big batch because we're doing the variations, so. If you want just a regular amount, you can do about half the recipe. That'll give you around 12 Yorkshire puddings. We're going to sift in some flour and then whisk this all together. The reason why we use the sifter is so we don't have any big clumps because we're going to have to whisk this together pretty smooth. So add a good amount and then you just tap the sifter and it's like a nice snowfall. Contrary to like a pancake batter where you want some of the lumps in there, we want this to be extremely smooth, almost like a crepe batter, crepe, crepe, whatever, I'm not French, man. I just know they're like thin pancakes. So we're just gonna whisk this together until it is combined. And at this point, we can also add in our milk. It's all together. Might take a few minutes uh, to get it as smooth as you want. Just take your time with this part because it's a very important step. You do need that smooth batter. Once you've sufficiently whisked or beaten your batter into line here, you can see it's pretty smooth, not any noticeable lumps, um, but it is also looking really thin. That is a feature, not a bug. So the reason why we want it a little bit thin is we're gonna allow it to cold ferment for about an hour in the fridge and then it'll tighten up a little bit, but it's still gonna be relatively thin. We want it thin, but also airy is it's going to help it pop up and become what we all know as a Yorkshire pudding or popover. All right, so while we're waiting for that batter to rest a little bit, let's talk about one of the most important components to any Yorkshire pudding, and that's going to be the fat that you choose to utilize. So traditionally, what is used is beef fat. And the reason for that is because Yorkshire puddings are often paired up with pot roast or some sort of Sunday dinner. You're gonna get the most flavor. Um, and in my experience, making these beef fat is the way to go. However, you can also utilize high smoke point oil, such as avocado oil, grapeseed oil, things like that. And I also do have this here, that being some leftover butter that we cooked steaks in. This is a Kerrygold Irish butter. We cooked some steaks in there, um, has some really awesome flavor. So I'm gonna go ahead and combine the two. So we're gonna scoop out a little bit of this butter into my beef fat, and then we'll go ahead and melt it down. And this is what's going to line our muffin tray before we pour in our batter. All right, guys, so we're back. We've melted our fat options down. This is that butter and just regular beef fat mixture. And this is from a recipe that I was testing out that you guys will see soon. Hot roast, these are some of the drippings um, from that. So these are infused with some of the flavors, so it's a little sweeter. You can even smell it. So I'm gonna use that for our gochujang Yorkshire pudding, and I'm gonna use the regular for our standard Yorkshire pudding, as well as our cheese and onion one. So as far as the preparation for this, we want to load in our beef fat into our muffin tins and then into the oven at 400 degrees for 10 minutes to make sure our beef fat is hot and smoking. That is an important part when you pour in your batter into the muffin tin that the fat is hot. So got a teaspoon here, gonna measure out a teaspoon of my beef fat into each of these little sections here. And a teaspoon is a, just an approximation. The one thing that you want to make sure of in your muffin tins is that they're filled all the way on the bottom. There's no gaps. This is smelling good already. And that's the importance of uh, just using the beef fat is because it imparts so much flavor. It's like the reason why people love steak so much is because there's so much of that beefy umami. Okay, so we've got 16 of our muffin sections filled up. Now we're gonna swap it to our infused beef fat. Okay, we're looking good there. Now into the preheated oven, and then we'll be back to pour in our batter.
All right, so you can see here, our batter is fully rested. It's been sitting in the fridge for an hour now, and it is thickened up. You can see slightly, ever so slightly, still pretty watery, but that's the importance of that step. Now we can load up our muffin tin once it's ready. All right guys, so we've got our Yorkshire pudding served up. We did it three different ways. And this is to encourage you guys to give yourselves a try. Whatever you got on hand, try throwing it in the Yorkshire pudding. If you don't have anything, make the base version. But if you do, give it a twist. So right here, we've got the green onion and cheese one listed, um, as you can see there. And then this is the gochujang paste. I kind of wish I incorporated it into the batter first rather than into each pudding. But I do like that there's like little pockets of gochujang in it. And then, of course, our standard, and these are looking excellente. So we're going to give it some butter and we'll give it a taste. Mmm. Wow. That is an excellent rendition of Yorkshire pudding. Definitely give that green onion and cheddar a try. So, so good. There's nothing really quite like a Yorkshire pudding. It's kind of this eggy pancake almost, and then you get the crispy crunch. Oh, so good. Okay, I'm going to go in for that gochujang next. Okay. This one, I actually really like too. I think it could have used the addition of a little bit of cheese in there. But you get that spicy sweet bite from the gochujang. Really solid. Okay, last but not least, let's go for the classic. Okay. Wow. Actually, sometimes you can't beat the classics, man. That beef fat that we layered into our batter as they were popping up and cooking just comes straight through you can taste that beefy flavor it is not on the sideline i think one thing i will add is and make an adjustment in the ingredients for you guys is a little bit more salt in the batter itself just so that the flavors can be accentuated a little more but tried all of them so you guys know what that means it's time for the dense test all right guys the dense test is here Let's um let's start with the classic. Okay, that one's good. Let's try this one. Mmm. That green onion one is my favorite. It reminds me almost of like um what is it called? It's like the Chinese, it's like egg pancake basically, where it has the scallions and stuff, and then it's like the roll, the flat one. That's what that one reminds me of. So far my favorite. Let's give the last one a taste. It's a good amount of spice, not too much, but enough to be like, wow, just want a roundhouse kick Ezra in the head. So, but overall, pretty solid meal. And uh, that being said, you know what time it is. That wraps up another recipe video. Thank you for staying with us, hanging out. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe down below. Let us know what you want to see next, whether that be another recipe, review, food challenge. We got it all here at Big Time Eaters. With that being said, we'll see you in the next video.